Greetings and welcome to a special edition of Slant Alpha Adventures. In this episode, we'll do a quick overview of the navigation equipment codes used on VATSIM. Now, note, why do I say in the graphic that they're based on pre-2019 FAA codes? Well, because as of the end of 2019, even the FAA isn't using them anymore. They've now adopted the more descriptive but more complicated ICAO format for describing what navigation capabilities your aircraft does or does not have. On VATSIM, we're still using the older FAA codes for now. For starters, what are we talking about? Navigation equipment suffix, and where do you enter this? It's in your flight plan, and it's a code that tells the controller what method of navigation you're using. We'll explain what we mean by navigation method in a moment. When you file a flight plan on VATSIM, whether you're using the web-based pre-filing page or your pilot client, there's a box where you fill in a single letter representing your navigation equipment type. When that gets sent to VATSIM, it gets added onto your aircraft type, in this case, a C-550 Slant Lima. Now, in the non-aviation nerd world, we call that character a slash, but for some reason in AvGeek speak, it's always said slant plus the letter code. If you ever wondered where my channel name, Slant Alpha Adventures, comes from, now maybe you're starting to get it. Here's the table of FAA navigation equipment codes lifted from the FAA's Aeronautical Information Manual, or AIM for short. Now, there are 18 different codes here, but I think we can simplify this because it really breaks down into three different questions. First, do we have a transponder and does it have mode C capability? Second, by what method are we following our filed route? And third, are we capable of operating in RVSM? Don't worry, I'm going to go over each of those and explain what they are. First, let's talk about the transponder. This is the box where you enter the squawk code that you get from your air traffic controller. The vast majority of aircraft on VATSIM have them, and even if you're flying something that doesn't, like a vintage biplane or something, you can still access transponder commands by setting squawk and mode with your VATSIM pilot client. And all VATSIM pilot clients simulate altitude reporting mode, also known as Mode C or Mode Charlie. Now, it is permitted to simulate aircraft operation without transponders on VATSIM in places where it's allowed in the real world if you have the controller's permission. But that's a pretty limited set of circumstances, and if you know enough to know what you're doing with that, you probably know enough to figure out your correct equipment type. So for purposes of this tutorial, we'll stick with all VATSIM aircraft have Mode C transponders aboard, and that takes away a bunch of codes that we would very seldom encounter on the network. In that same vein, I'm also going to take away the remaining TACAN code. TACAN is a military navigation system, and on VATSIM, you need to be part of a recognized virtual special ops group in order to fly military missions. You can fly military aircraft on regular flights, but you probably wouldn't navigate by TACAN in that case. And again, if you're in one of those rare situations where you would, you probably know enough to know what navigation equipment type to file. So that leaves us with seven main codes that you might see somewhat commonly on VATSIM. Let's skip down for a moment to RVSM. This stands for Reduced Vertical Separation Minima, and it used to be that between flight levels 290 and 410, you used 2,000 feet of vertical separation between levels instead of 1,000. Most places in the world now, they use 1,000 feet, just like they do below flight level 290. That means plane operating in that space need to meet certain requirements. To simplify matters on VATSIM, we would pretty much consider a plane RVSM capable if it can reach flight level 290 and higher. In the real world, it's a bit more complicated because there are planes capable of flying above RVSM space that aren't RVSM certified, for example. But for our purposes, stick with simplicity and say that for the most part, if your plane service ceiling is 29,000 feet or above, on VATSIM you're considered RVSM capable. So let's boil this table down into the seven remaining codes and let's talk now about navigation methods. The first line, radio navigation without DME, refers to having the ability to tune a non-directional beacon or a VOR station, but not having a way to tell how distant it is. You might have one or all of these three gauges, which can point you in the right direction, but you don't have anything counting down the mileage. This situation is pretty rare on VATSIM at this point, because most planes have a DME readout on it somewhere. But some vintage planes, particularly vintage warbirds, might not, and slant uniform is the code you'd use. If your aircraft has distance measuring equipment, or DME, you have a readout of how far your tuned-in navigation station is. It might be in a separate box like this, or it might be within another electronic display. If you have a mileage countdown somewhere, you have DME. 
Radio-based navigation without RNAV capability means your slant alpha if you're limited below flight level 290, or slant whiskey if you're capable of flying at or above that altitude but don't have RNAV equipment like a vintage airliner. That's the type of navigation we focus on in this channel with a few notable exceptions. This next type isn't all that common really, but there are a handful of aircraft developers focusing on vintage airliners now, and some of them do have a rudimentary inertial navigation system called a SIVA. It's actually modeled after the Delco Carousel IV-A, that may be Roman numeral 4, 4-A, I'm not sure. But at any rate, it's commonly referred to as the SIVA. It's capable of navigating you directly to any point, as long as you can punch it in by latitude and longitude coordinates. It's not capable of loading in an entire RNAV departure, arrival, or approach procedure, so it's really only useful for getting your vintage airliner across an ocean without getting lost. So, for navigation purposes, it's considered basic RNAV only. And again, it's not terribly common on VATSIM, except that vintage airliners are making a bit of a comeback in popularity lately. Finally, and certainly most commonly, there's the RNAV with GNSS category. Again, in reality, there are a bunch of variations within these, which is part of the reason the world is moving to the more complex ICAO format for describing your equipment capabilities. But for VATSIM purposes, this category is basically your GPS or flight management computer navigation. And it not only allows you to navigate to any point on Earth, but it allows you to enter these points by their two, three, or five letter names, as well as the capability to pull in entire routes and procedures, and have your autopilot track automatically along all of the different legs of the program's path. These are by far the most common nav codes you'll see on VATSIM, so most of the time you're going to be slant golf if you're in a GA plane that operates below flight level 290, and slant lima if you're in a personal jet, a business jet, or an airliner that has an FMC. So, there you go. Hopefully now you have an understanding about your navigation equipment suffixes, what they mean, where to enter them, and how to figure out which one your plane falls under. If you still have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or find me on any of the Slant Alpha Adventure social media outlets. We'll see you live on Twitch TV, and in the meantime, travel safely in your own adventures. We'll talk to you soon.